announced the metric results for the year 2012. She joins us this morning to talk a little <coughs> bit more about the results. Minister, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank good you for morning joining us this morning. There's been a sense of positivity about the results. 73.9%. Did you meet your target? I think so because we had aimed right to go to 72.5 because we also don't want to bend the system. We want to be sure that your growth is sustainable. So we did surpass our target. Yeah. So just in terms of what you actually did to get to this point, what are some of the interventions that you would attribute this journey and, and its success to? You know, we, I think I'll be just dishonest if I could say it's what we did when we came into an administration. We found that some systems were in place from my predecessor. One, when I got into the department, I found that Minister Naledi had already established a task team which was going to look at the curriculum because that was one of the major issues. So I fast-tracked the, the curriculum, a review, and fast-tracked the fact that we have to start implementing and dealing with all the challenges that were there in the curriculum. We are also aware that the sector is poorly resourced, that, that there are no books in schools. We push very hard with provinces to make sure that we increase the number of books in schools. But I think the main thing that we did as this administration, it was to refocus everybody's attention into academic outcomes, to say it's good to have access, it's good to have equity, but we are assessed on the basis of our academic outcomes. And just getting everybody to refocus on academic outcomes, I think, did pay dividends. So in your view, the <coughs> quality of the matriculant coming out will not give uh, Adam Habib advice or uh, the other vice chancellors at other institutions of higher learning uh, sleepless nights. They can be confident that the quality of the matriculant will walk in and can work with, with whatever is presented at a high level. No, they should. I mean, it's also unfair for higher education to squarely blame uh, challenges at higher education on basic education because you know very well you are dealing with teenagers who are going to be independent for the first time, who, are no, who don't have mother and father supervising them or motivating them who are on their own. So there are other factors besides academic <coughs> competences which affect kids when they go. That transition is a bit too high for other kids. But basically, the A's that we produce are the A's that should, sus should sustain themselves at universities. Yeah. Are you, are you happy with the number of A's you produce? Are mm -hmm. you happy with the 27% university entrance uh, level? Or is this something that needs work and that we can improve on? 27% is huge, even by any international. 27% for a big system like us. Because 27% translates to more than 136,000 learners who qualify to go and do a degree. There's also those who qualify to do diplomas. There are also 130-something thousand, so more than 300,000 kids to go to tertiary. It's a big number for, 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 for any state. So <coughs> we can do more uh, because in any case, we're not only producing, the, producing them for, for, for universities, but I think 27% is a good number. But we can still do better than 27%. We can always do because better. Because this is the quality of South African, uh, t the quality of the leader of tomorrow, the next Minister of Education. No, I promise we can still do more. We're targeting from the <coughs> National Development Plan to really move even towards 80% of passes, but also improve quite dramatically the quality of passes and having more and more South African kids passing in medicine science. So yeah. those are targets. We're still moving towards those. Yeah. There's still the lingering worry around the 30% pass rate. How are you dealing with that? <coughs> I just think it's lingering because we, we always love lingering things. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I was even saying to, the, to, 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 to some uh, editors to say, if you look at the, at the children who passed at 40, uh, uh, four subjects at 40 and three at 30, they only 285 of them. 285,000. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 285 number. Only 285. It's, it's, it's okay. 0.8%. Mm -hmm. So to really say it's lingering and undermine the fact that more than 300,000 qualified yeah. to go to universities, it's really also wanting to have storms in teacups because you will know we have been a teacher you can't have all kids passing at the same level mm -hmm. so if there's a kid who's a slow learner who's pushed themselves up to the maximum do you want to deny them even the dignity to pass metric if they just don't have the natural capacity to pass i, I think it's we just li like lingering things mm. and really make it big it's not big yeah is it impossible though to bring it back up to 50 percent or that 30 percent that's the standard now that's where we live no but what for we, we we've moved from 25 percent we've yeah. gone to 30 percent and I think just to close the matter, because I really don't think we want to question
the integrity of exams. I've set up a mm -hmm. ministerial task team okay. to really look at that, give us give South Africans international trends so that we can put their minds at ease to say we are not dumping our ki their kids. It's an acceptable pass rate as long as you know that at your higher end, you have your kids who are going to, who are, who are the gifted ones, the hardworking ones, who are going to pass at more than 50%. And that should put uh, the matter to rest. So I have established a ministerial task team, will be able to report so that we can uh, yeah, re assure South Africa that we're not dumping kids. The okay. kids what we're when doing is not abnormal. When is their report coming out, the ministerial task team? It's going to take some time. I'm sure by mid of this year we should be uh, having the report. The feedback. Before, okay. Yeah. Let's go provincial. You happy with Gauteng? 83%? No, I'm quite happy for Gauteng. I know the MEC really ran around with the, with the Premier. They really r did all, pulled all stops to get uh, to where they, 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 they are. I know Western Cape also has improved on their quality. They mm -hmm. have this slight decrease in terms of percentage. But if you look at the quality of the results, it's also quite good. So I'm quite happy with both provinces. Yeah. But also even for the free state to move into the 80s was also... What do they do exciting. differently in the free state? The Prima himself, like as I say, the other two provinces, uh, Gauteng, uh, Western Cape, mm -hmm. the Premier and the, uh, and the MECs are really pushing and supporting the system. Yeah. Um, the Eastern Cape, 58% to 62%? You know, I'm quite happy with the Eastern Cape. If you recall that during when the year, with the start of the year last year, for almost a term, because of the Roly mass action of such, we couldn't, there was no teaching. So for them to have even registered a growth to recover after that devastating strike, um, I'm really happy for that. And also the shortage of teachers, because the, that was the contention about, what is it, 4,500, 6,000 teachers? Now it's a movement of teachers. Mm -hmm. Our problem in the Eastern Cape is not shortage of teachers. We have excess teachers who are placed in wrong places. Mm -hmm. So where we require teachers, we don't have teachers. Where we don't need them, that's where they're stuck. So it's really the movement of teachers, which is a big challenge oh. in the Eastern Cape. Now, in Bumalanga... Uh, I'm very happy for them. They went into 70s. Yeah. Mm. And, and there were concerns about the quality, the question papers disappearing and stuff like that. Uh, those concerns are dealt you with. Know, the, those were dealt with. Yeah. Uh, we sent t teams, they verified, so there's nothing to, to, to panic about. To be worried mm. about. Northern Cape, it's been in the news I'm again. I'm happy for them also. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for instance, the district that John Taolo uh, was in 2011 was an underperforming district. That intervention, and that's why sometimes misfortunes really create fortunes for you. By really having that crisis and removing kids and going to put them in camps where they were residing there, so which means that all the time to study, no disturbance, it really paid dividends. Yeah. They performed much better than they, they would have performed, I think, when they were in their, in their old schools. So does this fulfill your performance contract with the president? It surpasses it. Does it surpass it? Your yeah. performance contract is what, 70%? 70% by 2014. Okay, so now you're sitting at 73.9%. So what does it mean, a bonus or something? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, no, 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 I think I'm excited. That, that's enough for me. Oh. I'm just quite happy. Okay. And that, 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 All right, okay. That, Minister, that, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, thank you very much for joining thanks us. Thank you, Minister is Minister responsible for basic education. You may have some thoughts about our conversation. Share those with us. Tweet at Mbuli Vuyo. Text 3... Uh, 33726, 33726. And if you're a matriculant watching our program, you'd like to get your results telephonically, here's the number to call here at SABC News 082152. 082152. Let's take